Sidechain compression is one of the most commonly used forms of compression out there, and I'm no exception. I find myself using it in pretty much every mix that I do, and I use it in very specific ways. Now, when it comes to prioritizing sounds and especially prioritizing a main vocal sound, this is a great way to get your vocals to cut out on top of a mix and on top of other elements that may clash with it. Now, in today's video, what I want to do is I want to break down how to use sidechain compression on your vocals, and I also want to discuss three specific ways that I like to use sidechain compression to make room for my main vocals within a track. Are you ready? Let's go. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy Five Piece producer and engineer extraordinaire. As always, we're going to start by talking about what sidechain compression is and how it works. And then we're going to talk about the three specific strategies that I like to use when it comes to sidechain compression. Now that in mind, if you already know about this stuff, if you're familiar with sidechain compression, you may want to consider hitting the chapter markers down below and getting right to the strategies. But for all the people who are new here, let's first discuss how sidechain compression works. Works. Now, sidechain compression is essentially great at prioritizing one sound over another. And the way it works is like this. Let's say that we had a vocal and an instrumental. Well, let's say that this vocal and instrumental are constantly clashing with one another and they're getting in the way of each other and it's hard for you to really discern each one or maybe sometimes certain vocal phrases are not coming through clearly, things of that nature. And obviously we want our vocal to be very dominant up front and most importantly clear because the artist is the focal point of the song. Now with that in mind, what we can do is we could take a compressor and put it on the instrumental. But instead of it functioning like a typical compressor, which is reducing peak whenever the you know instrumental gets too loud and causes the compressor to turn on we're not going to have a function like that instead what we're going to do is we're going to use the compressor sidechain and what happens is the sidechain looks for another sound source or a trigger sometimes referred to as an input or a key and that would be the vocal in this case and essentially only when the vocal the key here is triggered when it's audible when it passes a certain level will the compressor actually engage and reduce the volume of the beat so instead of this compressor working and looking at the actual sound we're applying it to it's looking at an external source and every time that external source happens it's going to reduce the volume again of that beat so every time the vocal hits the beat comes down a little bit to make room for it. And what ends up happening is the vocal just sounds a little bit more dominant and prominent. And depending on how you have it set up, you could have it set up so it's not very noticeable, it's really transparent, and it just cuts through clearly. But of course, we can also set it very aggressively, and I don't advise this, but you could do this to really offset things and have this vocal be extremely dominant. Again, we're gonna focus here on setting this up in a transparent way. So I wanna talk about three specific scenarios or situations that I find myself using sidechain compression in all the time. All right, so let's jump onto Pro Tools and we'll talk about this, starting with situation number one. So the first situation that we use sidechain compression with vocals is typically with vocal effects. So as you can see here, I've got a vocal effects bus and this is all my effects that go to this specific bus. We have a bunch of delays, short, medium, long, and a reverb. Well, I also have a pro MB on this bus. So again, this is where all my effects sounds are going. If I mute this, we're gonna have no effects being heard. But what happens is, I have this compressor on there and you can see there's a key symbol here and it's receiving the signal from my all Vox bus. This is all my dry vocals, my mixed vocals essentially. And every time that this vocal, this dry vocal happens, it's gonna cause this compressor to reduce the overall volume by up to 3 dB of the effects. So it's essentially prioritizing the dry vocal over the effects. And the reason why we're doing this is because sometimes the effects could become a little bit too dominant and they could wash out the actual dry vocal sound. It can make it sound more background or in the distance. It can make it sound less intelligible or clear. And we want to avoid all of these things. So we put this compressor onto the effects bus to ultimately prioritize the dry vocal sound and make sure that it's audible, clear, and upfront in your face, which is how I prefer to mix. So with that being said, let's check this out. I have this compressor set up again. The threshold is gonna be dependent on the actual key signal. So I've set this up to get a little bit of a reduction between one and three dB. 
I have a 3 dB range, so that means that's the most amount of volume we can lose at a given time. It's gonna turn it down by three, as opposed to if I had it say set to minus 10, that's a pretty significant gap of reduction. We're not gonna do that. We're doing this a lot more transparently. Uh, I have a fast to medium type of attack, so things are gonna be you know, grabbing it fairly quickly, but not too quickly, but still pretty quickly. And then the release is gonna let go right away, so this sound goes back to its regular volume pretty quickly. Because again, we want this to be transparent. We don't want this to be super, super noticeable. And you're gonna realize that I do set up my compressor is very similar to this. If anything, I might set it up so that the attack is slower, but typically I'm setting it up like this to achieve a transparent result. And I'm sure you may be wondering, the ratio is four to one. So that means for every four dB of volume that go into the compressor past the threshold, one will come out. That means it's essentially cutting the volume into a quarter for anything that is too loud. In this case, it's on the vocal effects. So let's check this out. I'll play this without the compressor first and I'll put it in at a certain point and just listen to see, does the actual vocal, the dry vocal itself, does it come up more and is it just a lot clearer in a way rather than when I have it out? Because when it's out, we have the effects and everything and it's sitting, you know, kind of muddy and congested in a way. I don't know what to say, just pass the J up on the left side. These days these people talk, they quick to tell you what's on their mind. Problem is I don't care what's mine is yours, I share it all. And I can't call it, but ain't stopping till I got it all. I don't know what to say, just pass the J up on the left side These days these people talk, they quick to tell you what's on their mind Problem is I don't care what's mine, is yours, I share it all And I can't call it, but ain't stopping till I got it all so as you could tell, some of the ambiences are just a lot more controlled and they get out of the way of that dry vocal, especially the reverb. You can hear there's this sort of reverb presence. You hear more of the room that the vocal is sitting in, technically speaking, and that presence comes down. And you may not necessarily want that. You may still want some of the ambience and in that situation, you're gonna have to play with the parameters here a bit. But obviously I'm trying to control that reverb, that ambience, and even the delays so that the dry vocal gets prioritized and cuts out on top over anything that might you know, clash with it, make it muddy, make it more background, and ultimately try to achieve a more transparent result in the process. So using it on the actual vocal effects, delays, reverbs, things of that nature, and prioritizing the dry vocal, that's one of the main ways I love to use sidechain compression in every single mix. Before I continue with the next strategy, I wanted to ask if you could please smash that like button if you haven't yet. And if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification as well so you can get notified every time I drop something new. I usually drop a new piece of content every single week, always focused on helping you sound better and helping you make more money with your music. If you want help with these two areas, definitely subscribe to the channel so I can help you with that. But with that in mind, let's get back to this lesson and talk about the next strategy. Now, the second way that I like to use sidechain compression in every mix is I like to use it on the instrumental. And this actually goes back to the example I talked about at the beginning of this video where the instrumental and the vocal, they typically clash with one another, especially in a specific frequency range. And as you can see here, I've got this Pro MB on my instrumental master and it's receiving the key input again from my all Vox bus. And ultimately we're grabbing from about 600 Hertz to 10,000 Hertz and this range is especially where the vocal lives. Most of the main stuff of the vocal, the meat and potatoes of the vocal live up here. And essentially we are having this area of the beat duck every time the vocal happens. And obviously what we're doing is we're allowing the vocal to sit a little bit more on top of the beat in the process. And that's why we're using it here is to achieve a more prominent vocal at the end of the day. Unlike the last example, you see that I've sectioned off a specific frequency band. And that is because if we apply this to the whole beat, it's gonna sound very noticeable, especially on the bass and the kick and the lower end stuff. And the other thing too is that lower end stuff, that should be prioritized. The vocal doesn't necessarily need to be prioritized over that unless they're really clashing with one another. But more than anything, the vocal actually gets in the way of the low end. So I'm gonna avoid doing that. And instead I'm gonna focus on clearing up the higher end, the high mids, I should say, 
to make room for the vocal on the beat. Hopefully this makes sense, but as you can tell, certain frequency sections need to be prioritized over others, and it's not always a one size fits all. And that's why I love to use the Pro MB, because I can actually focus on specific frequency bands rather than focus on the entire frequency range, because again, that may create some other problems that we don't want to deal with. Now with that in mind, let me bypass this compressor and we're gonna play it and let's just listen and see, does the vocal come out a little bit more on top, a little bit more forward when this compressor is in versus when it is not. Here we go. I don't know what to say, just pass the J up on the left side. These days these people talk, they quick to tell you what's on their mind. Problem is I don't care what's mine is yours, I share it all. And I can't call it, but ain't stopping till I got it all. I don't know what to say, just pass the J up on the left side. These days these people talk, they quick to tell you what's on their mind. Problem is I don't care what's mine, is yours, I share it all. And I can't call it, but ain't stopping till I got it all. So it's a bit subtle, but it absolutely is allowing the vocal to come through a little bit more. And if you want, I could solo this band so you can hear specifically what we're losing. Even if I mute the acapella, you're gonna see it's gonna be a lot of claps, maybe some synths and some hi-hat stuff. So primarily the hat, the clap, and a little bit of the main synth in the beat. It's a very minimalist beat, mind you, but that's obviously what we're affecting here. And of course, if you have a beat that's a little bit more, you know, busy, if you have a lot of horns or guitars or other sounds that are in this high-end kind of range, you may find that it's affecting more of those. And as a result, you may want to set it less aggressively. Similar to before, I have a, you know, minus two range. So two is the most amount of volume I can lose. We have a four to one ratio, which is a little bit more of an aggressive ratio, pretty fast attack, pretty fast release. But if I wanted to make this more transparent, I could actually ease up on the attack and bring it more to the right. And that'll hopefully let things breathe a little bit better. So you may want to consider doing that when you're setting this up for yourself. But as you can tell, we're trying to set this up very transparently so that we don't negatively impact the beat while at the same time ensuring that the vocal comes up and becomes a lot more forward in the mix and doesn't get washed out by the other elements that compete with it. The third and final example of how we can use sidechain compression in a mix is to use it on backgrounds and ad libs. And this is obviously gonna be in situations where you have a lead as well as backgrounds and ad libs happening at the same time. And when this happens, you're usually gonna have some mud and congestion. Things might just overlap so much and feel like they're one. They're not really different takes. And of course you can address them in different ways. You can pan things separate ways. You can use some EQ and boost and cut in different directions. But sometimes this still leads to this overwhelming presence of all the vocals and you really wanna make sure that your lead vocal, your main vocal gets prioritized. Now on this track, I have a main vocal here, this new chorus, and I'm sending it out of a bus and this is my main Vox sidechain bus. I typically have this in every track. And I'm ultimately using that sidechain to make room on some background stuff that's happening. You see, I have the main Vox triggering this compressor, and this compressor is happening across the entire frequency spectrum. However, if I did wanna get more specific, I could obviously you know, pull the band and focus it more on the upper frequencies if that's where the issue lies. However, if you're not sure, it's always good to just start by compressing the entire spectrum and then zooming in and finding where there's a lot of frequency overlap and maybe focusing the sidechain compression there if that seems to be the main issue. Now, with that in mind, let's just play this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna first bypass and just show you what each part sounds like so you know what you're listening for. But this is the background here. It's been a long time coming, late so running by myself, yeah, I've been working on me. Hopefully you could tell I did some stereo processing to really push it into the sides, whereas my main vocal you can see is just a mono single vocal in the middle. So that's what we're ultimately applying the compression to, and then this is the lead. It's been a long time coming, legs still running by myself, yeah, I've been working on me. You kind of get the idea. So now let's hear it together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just bypass this and we'll put it in and just see, does the lead vocal come out more on top of the background, this female background that is happening at the exact same time. Here we go. 
It's been a long time coming, legs still running by myself. Yeah, I've been working on me. Yeah, I've been working on me. Had to go deep like a splinter. Yeah, I've been here, found myself, but I'm still working on me. But I'm still working on me. It's been a long time coming, legs still running by myself. Yeah, I've been working on me. Yeah, I've been working on me. Had to go deep like a splinter, yeah, I've been here, found myself, but I'm still working on me, but I'm still working on me. Pretty impressive. In my mind, the way I see it is, I really don't know what to listen to when they're happening at the same time, at least when this side chain is not in. Um, and when that happens, again, I'm just sort of like a little, I don't want to say disoriented, but I'm just not really sure which vocal to focus on. Do I focus on the female backing vocal? Do I focus on the lead? They're still definitely distinct and separate, but I just don't know what one to really listen to as the listener. And I find that to be problematic. I really want my listener to know what they're supposed to be focusing on. And ultimately, when I put this side chain in, it just kind of keeps that female vocal in check. It puts the main lead, you know, at the forefront, makes you focus on it. And it just creates a much better balance and blend uh, in this portion of the song, which is very like intimate in a sense, because now we're getting a little bit closer to the artist. There's less instruments happening, less things competing with it, but these two things are still competing with one another. Hopefully that makes sense. But at the end of the day, what I'm really trying to get at is you can use side chain compression to make sure that your main lead vocal is prioritized and the focus of a section over some other stuff that's happening at the same time, such as a backing vocal, ad libs, and other things of that nature. So those are three strategies that I love to use in every single mix. I really do use these every single time I'm mixing. And again, it really helps me prioritize my vocal sound and different parts of the vocal at different times in the track. You can see these are all unique strategies that follow a very similar formula. And I hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, please smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know that it helped or maybe letting me know if you want to see something in a future video. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you can get notified every time I drop a new video. I drop something new every single week and I'm looking forward to helping you guys again in the very near future. All right, you take care now. Peace. Five.